Good it is 12 minutes before 8 o'clock and a warm welcome back. Now, before the break, we showed you the first part of an interview where Morning Live's producer was speaking to visual artist Candice Braids. Let's now take a look at the second part of that conversation where they are talking about her upcoming solo exhibition called Love Story that's opening on the 3rd of February. It's actually today uh, at the Goodman Gallery in Johannesburg. Let's take a look. Candice, can you repeat your question? I just forgot. I heard the question, but I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about anything that I'm not sure about. You are back in South Africa for your solo exhibition, uh, which is called Love Story. Could you please tell us more about that? So this, this uh, really started with living in Berlin in the summer of 2015 and um, being witness to a huge arrival, an arrival of a huge number of people who uh, were flooding into to Germany and into Central Europe at that moment in time as a result of a series of devastating circumstances that they felt they had to escape, whether it was war or whether it was shortage of resources or whether it was, um, you know, being persecuted on the basis, basis of sexual preference. Tell us about the process um, it took for you to put this body of work together. The making of Love Story, it really came from a very basic instinct, which was myself and many, many others in Berlin were trying to figure out what we could do to help uh, during the summer. For some people that meant uh, donating money, for others it meant volunteering at some of these centers where people were arriving. So through my uh, relationship to um, that situation, I started to meet people and I started to have long conversations with people. And one of the things, apart from anything else that happens with a you know, crisis of, of, of migration, mm -hmm. is that stories are migrating. So this is not just millions of people who are moving, but, but millions of stories. They bring their stories as well. They bring their stories, they bring their languages, they bring their food, they bring in their relationship to family, they're bringing the smells that they remember from their childhood, they're bringing uh, the memory of a particular wind in a particular place. However, as I started to put together the pieces, what also became very painfully um, obvious to me was that we live in an, in an attention, an economy attention, in which some stories matter and others don't. So certain people's stories are afforded a lot of space and a lot of visibility and are automatically interesting. And talking about your work, it sort of revolves around issues of race, issues of um, religion and so on. Um, what do you want to what do you want your work to come across as the thing that's interesting about making art is that you're really starting a conversation and if you could finish that conversation it wouldn't be an interesting conversation uh, i think that everybody when they come to look at art they bring with them different experiences and different ways of looking at the world and different ways of receiving information and what's interesting i think always is to receive a wide range of of responses to the work and to understand that that the act of seeing is not neutral people see different differently according to what tools they bring with them or what life experience they bring with them. So I don't have fixed expectations about what I want the work to achieve or what I want people to receive from the work. And how did you decide on the six, on the six case studies? Well, I really wanted, um, I wanted the mixture of people to suggest that anyone could be a refugee. I think that you know those of us who've not been displaced have a tendency to think that this is something that happens to people mm. far away. I wanted to select a range of people who collectively didn't fit any stereotype. So we've got a collection of men and women, we've got a transgender woman, we've got a gay man, we've got a Venezuelan who was a professor at a university, um, extremely educated, uh, we've got an Angolan man who was denied the chance of an education because he was stolen from his village and basically forced to be a child soldier. Uh, so we've got different levels of education, people from just different geographical contexts, you know, all, all over the world. I, I hoped that the variety of, of experiences that are channeled through these interviews um, would kill the possibility of drawing any 
easy conclusions of what a refugee is. They're Muslim interviewees, they're Christian interviewees, they're atheist interviewees. There are people who are running away from uh, religious persecution, mm. people running away from gender persecution, people who are running away from war, people. I think that, I think it's important for us to realize, looking back historically, that anyone can be a refugee. Love Story is opening in Johannesburg for the first time on the 3rd of February. Um, what can the audience expect? Um, I hope that the work and that my experience of the work when we've shown it elsewhere so far has been that the kind of shock of coming through the Hollywood version and realizing that the people whose stories these are are available and they're there and you can sit and hear it from them. It does... Um, people do tend to spend time with the original interviews. Um, it's hard for anyone to watch them all in full. As I said, they're 20 mm -hmm. hours of interviews. But I hope that, um, that the structure of the work um, provokes people into pausing for longer than they might otherwise have.